Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson, along with Bob Sarn. And, Bob, the old saying is you wanted to get into show business. I know we're standing on the top of a stadium, and we are freezing. That's the kind of weather we have in the Great Smokies of Tennessee. But this is a big game. Vanderbilt, 1-9 and nine on the year. They can score, Bob, as you know. Defense is their problem. But when you talk about Vanderbilt, all they seem to talk about is Frank Mordica, their fine running back. Frank is a great threat, Jim. He's not only great on the outside, but he kind of dances through that line of scrimmage for you. And, and uh, he'll give a lot of people some trouble going through. Well, there's some pro scouts here that are taking a look at number 32. His name is Preston Brown. Some say he is the fastest wide receiver in all of collegiate football. Well, that don't surprise me at all. Preston can move his feet pretty heavy. But uh, I'm looking forward to the matchup. I hope to see Preston Brown against Roland James in that defensive <laughs> backfield. That's going to be something. What about a fellow by the name of George McIntyre? Now, this is a defensive specialist. He's come and taken over as head coach of Vanderbilt, and he finds that his team can score, but the very thing he's good at, defense, they're not playing too well. Well, I think in the past years, uh, Jim, George had problems, at Van uh, Vanderbilt had problems in scoring. So he tried to beef up his offense, uh, which he has done somewhat, and I'm gonna, I think you're going to see it in his recruiting powers this year. He's going after the big studs up front on the defensive line. They were saying down in Nashville, if Tulane can do it, a comparable type school, so can we. That's the story of Vanderbilt. We'll come back and talk about Tennessee in just a moment. The University of Tennessee is going to the Blue Bonnet Bowl down in your territory, down in Texas. But I understand the people at Purdue are saying, why do we get a 5-4, and four, perhaps a 6-4 and four team down here in Texas? But Tennessee, they've had a great recruiting year, and they've had some surprises. Hubert Simpson only started three games and within 141 yards of setting a rushing record for the ball. Hubert Simpson is one of the premier running backs in the United States this year, Jim. He can do it all. But one of the things Hubert Simpson can do is he can catch the ball in the flats, and he's very good at that. And another fellow that's going to start in the backfield with him today is not the usual Jimmy Streeter, number six, although he may play today, but Jeff Olszewski, number five. Had a great spring practice, perhaps the best in the spring, but very little action, and with Streeter hurt, he's got to play. Uh, Jeff is a very good ball player. Coaches think uh, the world of him. It's a shame that he had to play behind Streeter this year, but I think Jeff is going to show us a lot of maneuvering out there coming off of the I formation this week. Now we come to a fellow that built a program at Iowa State, won a national championship at Pittsburgh, and they tell me that Johnny Majors has had the best recruiting seasons the last two years of anybody. Huh. He may not be winning big this year, but he's going to bowl, and he's got all his good youngsters. He's definitely had some great recruiting years. He's gone into Missouri, Arkansas, and he's coming out of Alabama with a few good ball players. Uh, he's playing with a, a lot of young ball players this year. His starting center is a sophomore, and he's one of the better ones in the country. It is cold, it is winning the Great Smokies, but there are more than 80,000 people here, and we'll have the kickoff when we come back. Part of the campus here at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Tennessee, and in the stadium, 84,142 seats have been sold. There will be fewer than that because of the bitter weather that not yet has edged in to the 40-degree range. And if we're cold, how do you think the Tennessee drum majorettes are? Vanderbilt, 1-9, and nine, has won the toss and will receive. So Alan Duncan of Tennessee, who won the Kentucky game a week ago with a field goal with just five seconds to go, will kick it off. Preston Brown... Number 32, remember he's got nine three-speed. He's the wide receiver told you about. Is the deep man along with number 18, Williams. Marcus Williams, 18, and 32, Preston Brown. Sunny day, no precipitation expected. Tennessee expected to win. Vanderbilt expected to lose. But this is a big game. And the ball has blown off the tee. That's one of those anticlimactic things, Bob Sign. Get all ready to do it. The ball blows off the tee. The tension's got to go one more time. Duncan. You've heard about him, the son of African missionaries, taking agriculture here at Tennessee and wants to return to Africa himself as a missionary in agriculture. Duncan kicks off, usually kicks to the end zone. 
The wind is crosswise, and that is Preston Brown, number 32, with all that speed, trying to find some running room, and just does get across the 15-yard line. But it'll be first and ten from there. Van Heflin, number seven, will be the quarterback. Frank Mordica, 35, watch him. One running back, Terry Potter, 45, the other running back. 32, Preston Brown, one wide receiver. Charles Edwards, number three, the split end. Flavis Joy Smith, 82, the tight end. There's the offensive line. From the 17-yard line, Vanderbilt, first and ten. Two tight ends are in there, and the ball is given straight ahead to Terry Potter, and he doesn't get anything. Joey Smith and John McCain, the tight ends, in there within the 20-yard line, and the pickup is perhaps a yard. It's second down to nine. Tennessee's defensive line, Kofer, Jones, Burns, White, and Ingram. We saw Ingram have an outstanding game against Alabama down in Birmingham. Defensively, you can see that Bolton is playing for Greg Pukey, who is not starting their fine old Southeastern Conference linebacker. Roland James, their All-American, is in there. Van Heflin looking as a man wide open and throws behind McCain. McCain did not look like he was possessed of great hands there or might be hampered. He turned around and put one hand back, and it was wide open. Jim, what they're doing is they came off the beer, quarterback Roland, and the keys, I don't think the key was caught by the linebacker who was supposed to be covering the flats. He definitely was wide open. Third down and nine, and that's one of those things that could have gone. The ball thrown behind McCain, got one hand on it, couldn't control it. McCain is on the left side now. And Heflin doesn't get out of the backfield. Doesn't get out of the backfield. That was Kenny Jones, number 99, who made the stop. And now Jim Arnold will have to kick the ball away, and he's kicking into a stiff wind. Now Barksdale and Roland James go deep. Barksdale, the up man, James, the deep man. James, like so many on the Tennessee team, a member of the track squad. Arnold's got a good kicking average. Line drives it, however, and James will have a chance to return this from the 41. Across the 50 and cut down as he gets into Vanderbilt territory. It'll be first and 10 from the 46 and a half yard line. Dak was made there by Danny Stafford, the strong safety, number 30. And now Jeff Olszewski will start at quarterback, number five for Tennessee. James Berry, 34, and Hubert Simpson, 32. 141 yards away from breaking Haskell Stanback's rushing record. The wide receivers. Phil Ingram, number four, Anthony Hancock, number 28, the tight end, Reggie Harper. And there's your offensive line. First down, Oshevsky almost fell down, in trouble now, does not look at all sure of himself, and loses three yards. Jim, that middle, uh, middle guard that just does an outstanding job. The Vanderbilt uh, using a five-man defensive line on this one here, and uh, I think they'll be shifting between the five and the four in the pro set. Well, they started out the season, Bob, with a five-man line. Then they went to a four-man line. Here's that defensive line. And we got a four-man setup. And then when we got here, they said, nope, for this game, we're going back to the five-man line. Second down and long, about 13. Oshevsky hit as he throws the ball, and it's off the hands of Hubert Simpson. Joe Staley really lived, leveled Oshevsky. And Tennessee gets away to a bumbling start. Remember, James Street is not in there. Joe came in there untouched. He was he did an excellent job, and he kind of smelled past to the other side. Well, Bob Sign likes to hear anybody from Texas, especially from the Dallas area, and that's where Staley, a walk-on freshman, is from. So now they find it. Third down, at about 16 to go. The clock is not working. It still shows zero seconds to go. Olszewski throws for Ingram on the far sideline. That is a catch, and that is a first down. Well, let's hold that about being a first down. He's about a yard shy. I thought he got ahead of the sticks. He did not. Olszewski's passing right now, Jim, and he's throwing out to Phil Ingram, and what a catch. He does an outstanding job going up. Keeps those feet in, and... Super job. Well, Tennessee has not picked up a yard until then, and now on fourth down and a yard to go, 
out of the eye formation. They are going for the first down. And they give it to Simpson. And he's very close. And I think he may have fumbled. Let's see what happens. They're coming out with the ball. Swindoll is getting up as though he had the ball. And let's see where they mark it. And obviously they have not ruled it a fumble. The Tennessee people say we got it. The Vanderbilt people say we got it. And while they bring out the sticks, we'll tell you the referee is James Harper Jr. Harvey Hardy, the umpire. Robert Gaston, the linesman. Robert Caldwell Jr., the line judge. The field judge is William Stanton. And the back judge is William T. T. Jr. Then Oldham operating the electric clock. And it belongs to Vanderbilt. Tennessee does not get it. Again, I'll caution you. The clock is not working in terms of time. Jim, Phil Swindle made that play himself. He uh, stacked up that middle and came in at an angle and just kind of really stopped it very well. They were anticipating coming over the middle on their power, but uh, the Vanderbilt defense did do a great job in stopping them. Ball on a 36-yard line. The Commodores of Vanderbilt have been known to score and score big. Again, two tight ends, but Preston Brown is wide to the left. They may test out that Tennessee secondary. Dan Heflin, the quarterback. On first down, pitch back, and that is Potter. Potter gets out to the 45-yard line, and that's a pickup of eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Roland James took him out of bounds. Quarterback got it coming off of the veer, and he waits the very last minute, pitches out to Potter just as he's getting hit, and Potter does an excellent job of turning the corner and coming up. Second down on two yards to go. The ball on the 44-yard line of Vanderbilt. No score early in the first quarter. Straight ahead goes Potter, and he may have the first down. Nudging across the 45 where White made the stop, number 90. And it's going to be third down. I don't want to say that Tennessee and Knoxville is nuts about football, but... One of the sandwiches available in our hotel coffee shop is the Veer sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to eat them up today, right? <laughs> Third down and a half a yard. Again, Preston Brown, they haven't thrown to him yet. Wide to the left. Van Heflin's got the first down to midfield. Van Heflin against the Air Force Academy had touchdown runs of 80 and 70 yards. He rushed 167 yards that day, so when you talk about the backfield, Pencil and Van Heflin as a running back along with Mordecai who's not handled the ball yet and Terry Potter. Van Heflin did an excellent job. He runs this veer so far Jim the best that I've seen uh, on the veer situation out of the University of Houston. First down from midfield and Heflin on first down back to throw throws has it man. That's Preston Brown first down inside the 35 yard line hit down there by Roland James and that's that good wide receiver. But all that 9-3 speed. First down at the 34-yard line of Tennessee. Okay, Ben. He goes back. He's getting good protection. Very good line protection. Going out to Brown. And they're going at the strength of the University of Tennessee defensive back in Roland James, who's uh, All-American. Vanderbilt fired up for the big game. They say this would make the season despite the fact they're one and nine on the year. First man through. The ball is loose and that will belong to Tennessee, I do believe. Back at the 21 yard line. And apparently they're going to hold on to the ball saying that Vanderbilt got it at the 21 yard line. I couldn't believe it with all those Tennessee people around there. But Vanderbilt awarded the ball at the 21. Terry Potter jumped on it. Potter's been very much in evidence today. Crowd coming alive. Van Heflin still on his feet. Breaks to the outside and gets down to the 15-yard line. The market at the 15 where Wilbur Jones, number seven, made the stop. That's a pickup of six. It'll be second down and four from the 15-yard line. Again, we'll tell you the clock is not operating. We are in the first quarter. And Vanderbilt has shown an ability to score this year. Their problem is holding the other team from scoring. Van 
Heflin. Long count. Still has the ball. Pitches it back to Mordica. And Mordica just gets inside the 15-yard line. Tackled there by Brian Ingram, number 84, out of Memphis, a senior. That's the first time that Mordica, the all-time leading Vanderbilt rusher, has handled the football. Third down and about three to go from the 14-yard line. This time they send Preston Brown wide to the right. That's quite a job for Wilbur Jones over there on him. They've got him one-on-one, -on -one, and they're looking for him over there, and Wilbur Jones goes over to break it up and almost makes the interception. That's a dangerous swing pass going into the sidelines over there. Here you can see him throwing down the sideline. They threw it to that side. And look at Wilbur Jones come in and get his hands up. Dan Heflin did not go for the pattern into the end zone. But whether it went into a flat and that can be trouble. All right. A field goal attempt of 31 yards by Mike Woodard. Vanderbilt trying to get on. With Taylor to hold. And from 31 yards out, it is good. 31-yard field goal by Woodard and Vanderbilt. The 26-point underdog breaks on top here in the first quarter. Well, there's a surprise, but we go back to the fact that it's a big game. ESPN and its final week of collegiate football, the regular season, and we've had an outstanding season. Tennessee, remember when they're out in front of Alabama, 17 to nothing, only to lose. Remember Alabama with its tough time over LSU, three to nothing. Remember Southern Cal at the time, number one, hanging on and winning in the last 32 seconds against LSU. That's the kind of football coverage we've had. And if you look ahead, the NCAA basketball season is coming up. And we'll be there right on to the finals in March. Gary Moore and Tony Hancock. Anthony Hancock go deep. Moore's number is 33. And Anthony Hancock is 28. You know, in the backfield, Tennessee can have Glenn Ford and Gary Moore. Now, you've heard of them. And if you get the quarterback from Vanderbilt, Van Heflin, you have quite an all-star celebrity backfield. Woodard, who connected on a 31-yard field goal, kicks off. And it is Moore bobbling the ball around, and he is in deep trouble. And down he goes inside the 20-yard line. On each occasion, there's been excellent special teams coverage by the kicking team. Dak was made by John Clemens, a freshman tight end, along with a little help from Norman Jordan, who's a sophomore running back. Ball between the 17 and 18 yard lines. Wide to the left goes Ingram. Olszewski in there, and boom! Simpson doesn't get anywhere, does he? Well, they told me that Vanderbilt couldn't play defense, but Vanderbilt is playing defense. You're wondering about Bob Sign. He has not left the booth. He's not returned to Texas. We're having some technical problems. And we hope to get them fixed momentarily. Hancock comes wide to the right. Ingram goes to the left of this 3-0 ball game. Vanderbilt leads. Quick pitch back. That is Hubert Simpson again. Gets a good block and gets some yardage. Out near the 25-yard line. Fumble to football, and it belongs to Vanderbilt. Recovery made by Joe Staley, who moments ago made an outstanding defensive play. Jim, there they go. Uh, that defensive line of Vanderbilt is doing an excellent job. And watch Staley come in here and just into your picture right now. And I'll tell you something. They are just banging them up. The Vanderbilt defense is still in the five, but they're getting a lot of help from those linebackers coming up on those sweeps. Van Heflin comes back in. It is three to nothing Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt with the first down at the 20 yard line. And there goes Potter up the middle. Almost a touchdown first and goal to go from the two. Tripped up by Roland James. And you don't think Vanderbilt's not fired up. Vanderbilt is really fired up. But I want you to watch the offensive line. Watch this offensive line just take that defensive line back. Look at that hole. Jim, I believe you and I could fit through that hole. Well, you might. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Hudgens, the strong side that, guard, opens up that. That is some kind of a run. 
First and goal to go, and this is one of those big games you never know. Long count, Van Heppen gives to Potter. Potter gets down about the one-yard line, and that is about all. Ryan Ingram made the good play there. It's at times like this that bowl officials go nuts. They have to hand out their invitations, at least the first day they can. It's November the 17th. Now they pick Tennessee. Tennessee may well win this ball game, but you know that Purdue is complaining that Tennessee is in the ball game against them, and here's Vanderbilt pushing around Tennessee. Maybe a different story at the end of the day, however. That happened standing up. Standing up. He goes uh, Heflin in there, Jim. He fakes the, off the potter. He rolls out the outside of the tackle. Everybody's blocking in, and uh, just a super job right off of the veer. Heflin's doing an excellent job directing the Commodores right down the field. That's his fourth touchdown rushing this year. And again, we will have Mike Woodard, who kicked a 31-yard field goal moments ago with Taylor to hold, adding the extra point, and just like that, it is a 10 to nothing football game. Again, we must remind you that the clock is not working, so we can only tell you that you are in the first quarter. Well, we told you about the basketball coming up. Let me give you some of the games coming up to be shown by ESPN in December. And that is Santa Clara at UCLA, Creighton at Nebraska, a live telecast of Detroit at North Carolina. Some say the Tar Heels will win it all. The Louisville Classic with Daryl Griffiths of Louisville. Remember him? Evansville, Western Kentucky, and UNC Charlotte. The Cougar Classic, Brigham Young with the fine backcourt All-American Don Ains, Santa Barbara, LaSalle, and Texas A&M. All on ESPN, more than 150 NCAA basketball games after this outstanding NCAA football season. Gary Moore and Anthony Hancock are the deep men. Moore, 33, Hancock, 28, and Woodard to kick off. And that ball may be taken by an up man, is taken by an up man to the 30-yard line, and that's about all. And Woodard did not get a good kick at all then. It looked to me as though Junior Reed, a man on the kicking team, returned it to the 30-yard line. Well, Jeff Olszewski will have to get the folks started here with James Streeter, their all-time total offense man. On the sidelines, he could play. Oseski hands off, and that is Simpson for a couple of yards. And Dean, 75, and Gourley, 71, made the tackle. A gain of three. Let's call it second down and seven. A surprise that has stunned this chilled crowd of better than 80,000. Vanderbilt, the last Southeastern Conference game, the Commodores won, was against Tennessee here in 1975, since they've lost 23 in a row. The up man, that's Barry breaking into the secondary. First down across the 40-yard line. Out to the 43, where Jim Sherman, a fine tackler, had to make a good tackle to stop Barry. This is Jimmy Barry. He's a sophomore out of Natchez. And look at this. You will see Streeter come up and hang on to him. He is a tough man and had to be to bring down James Berry. First down from the 42. Second man through is Simpson, and they're pretty well keying on Simpson. And Phil Swindoll, who has been playing an outstanding game here in the early going, made the tackle, number 81. There is Swindoll from Atlanta. He has had an excellent game so far, Jim. Matter of fact, the whole defensive line, but he's doing very well. Well, Tennessee trying to waken itself up. They've got Ingram and Hancock both to the right. They've got Olszewski rolling out and in trouble. What a play made by Joe Staley, the freshman walk-on from Dallas, Texas, going behind the 40-yard line, and it'll be third and long. Uh, watch... Uh, Joe Staley fight off the block. I, at least I hope we'll see it here. A second to Jeff. 
Look, he fights off his block, goes in and makes the tackle, didn't even give the quarterback time to turn the corner or throw the ball. The Vanderbilt campus all week long, they've been playing very loud on the PA, the Tennessee fight song. And Stanley says, I hear it in my sleep. Olszewski forced to throw, gets the ball up in the air over everybody. Intended for Ingram, back down at the 36-yard line. And Myrick was back there with him, the fine, strong safety of Vanderbilt. And it's fourth down, and John Warren will have to kick it away. And that much maligned Commodore defense is playing some defense. Preston Brown, the 9-3 speedster, standing back inside his own 15-yard line. Warren has been averaging nearly 40 yards per kick. High, good kick. Brown at the 15, 13-yard line. And a mess of folks, and down he goes at the 12. Excellent punt recovery, but a fine kick by Warren, allowing Tennessee to get down under the ball. Oh, spotted at the 14-yard line, and now the Tennessee folks want their team to play some defense. A fumble recovery by Vanderbilt allowed them to go on and get a field goal, and then a fumble by Simpson at the 20-yard line and gave Vanderbilt good field position. And now the Tennessee fans want Vanderbilt shut down. They've had enough. First man through is Potter, and Potter gets across the 15-yard line, picks up nearly four yards. It'll be second down on a short six. Bill Bates, the safety man, a freshman, came up to make the stop. Hometown man from Knoxville. Brown goes wide to the right. Ten to nothing. Vanderbilt, first quarter. You keep waiting for Mordica to do something. He's handled the ball just one time. There's Mordica bursting into the secondary and is very close to a first down. We're waiting for him to do something, and he got the ball. That's uh, Van Heflin. Uh, it's a straight off handoff to Mordica. Good block, good hold by the offensive line of the Vanderbilt Commodore. John McCain made the good block. And they'll bring the sticks out again. A chilly, chilly day in Knoxville, Tennessee, in the Great Smoky Mountains. It's a first down, Vanderbilt. Before I forget it, one of my great friends and one of the great writers of all time of sports, great reporter of the New Sentinel here in Knoxville, Tom Siler, is retiring. And today, he was honored at midfield by the University of Tennessee, and he's covered this club for just about 50 years of his sports reporting. Mordecai is out, and Marcus Williams has come in. The running back as Van Heflin back to throw, gets the ball, and it's complete to Joey Smith across the 30-yard line, and that's very close to yet another first down. It'll be second down and short, and it is Tennessee that's having a defensive problem. Boy, I tell you, they are really having a breakdown of communication. This is you show Van Heflin throwing to his tight end. His tight end has no coverage <coughs> excuse me, in the flats, and uh, it looks like another first down is going to be very close, uh, Jim. Second down and short, and Frank Mordica has come back in. Williams has gone out. Ball on the 33-yard line of Vanderbilt, and there is Mordica, the fake to him. Van Heflin keeps the ball, first down, across the 45, and if you think it fooled me for a moment, it fooled Tennessee for a lot longer time than that. Van Heflin takes it, rolling down. Coming out with that via fakes, going in the slot, keeps going on down there and just puts on some speed. But he's a strong fella, Jim. He's got the, he's carrying two and three boys with him down there. Well, as a quarterback, he is 6'2", 220. That's right. He's a hoss. And now there is going to be a penalty stepped off against Tennessee, and I would assume it's going to be for unnecessary roughness. Takes the ball down to the 36-yard line in this 10 to nothing ball game, which Vanderbilt leads, and Jimmy Street is warming up in a hurry on the sidelines. He's the regular starting quarterback, as Olszewski has not been able to move Tennessee. Van Appen's got it, pitches back to Mordica. Mordica looking for some running room, still on his feet, and loses a yard or so. And credit the tackle to anyone you want to, but Benny Martin was the first to hit him, number 29. 
And that's the first time we've seen the Tennessee defense pursue except on a kick today. Jim, uh, Ben Heflin pitches it out to Mordecai, but Benny Martin fights off his block just the way it's supposed to be done, puts him down, contains, and he's waiting for all the fellows to come and help him from the inside, and here they come, just like a big army. Super job. We'd like to tell you how much time left in the first quarter, but again, the clock is not working. We're in the first quarter. Potter hit in the backfield and barely gets to the 35-yard line. Fine play on that side by Kenny Jones with some help from Bill Bates, the safety who was forcing on the play. Bugs comes in, yet another wide receiver. The tight end McCain comes out. Well, Wayman Bugs is in. His number is eight. Brown is in. They're looking, and nobody's going to get that. Bugs was coming across the middle from left to right. Brown went down from the right side and turned out to the right, and the ball was thrown between them, and neither receiver was looking at it. That looked like a bro uh, broken pattern because uh, Heflin uh, threw that ball, and he knew he was throwing right to that 10-yard line on the hash mark, and the receiver went out towards the uh, sideline. So it was definitely a broken pattern. Fourth down and nine, but remember, Vanderbilt put this ball in play at their own 17-yard line, so they moved the ball out to where the punter, Jim Arnold, will have an outstanding chance to get it into the end zone or out within the 10 or 5 if he can. He's going to angle for the near sidelines, but I don't know if it's going to make the sidelines at all. It goes into the end zone, and Tennessee will take over first and 10 at their own 20. And thus far... The blue bonnet bound Tennessee Volunteers have been outplayed by the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Well, here's something new on ESPN. The North American Team Rodeo Championship from Tulsa, Oklahoma. The contest will feature the Twisters of Tulsa and British Columbia, who won that 1979 Canadian Team Rodeo Championship. The Twisters will represent the USA. The game will be shown Saturday, December 8th at 8.30 a.m. That's the North American Team Rodeo Championships on ESPN. Tennessee from their own 20-yard line. Streeter is in there at quarterback, handing to Simpson, and Simpson barrels out for about eight or nine yards before Ronnie Myrick makes the stop. They'll mark it at the 28-yard line. It is second down and two. Streeter, number six, has been hurt. And was not expected to see much action today. Barry and Simpson is setbacks. First man through is Barry, and he's got the first down across the 30-yard line. Jimmy Streeter, number six, hurt his knee late in the first half against Notre Dame. But he is the record total offense man for Tennessee with 4,597 yards. And he's going to add to that before the day is over. First down at the 30-yard line. 10 to nothing, Vanderbilt. First quarter. Long count by Streeter, gives it to Simpson, and Simpson this time is not going to be that successful, is he? Staley and Swindoll made the tackles. Staley's 86, Swindoll is 81. There's Jimmy Streeter. Yeah, that's some of what he's done here. Did work out this week. They thought he might play some, but only on passing situations, but getting a little desperate, even though it's the first quarter for Tennessee. Ingram wide to the left. And now they say the first quarter is over. That's the end of the first quarter, and surprise, surprise, a big game has a big score, but it's in the favor of Vanderbilt. At the end of one, Vanderbilt 10 and Tennessee nothing. Second down, as we begin the second quarter, Streeter back for his first pass for Ingram, and Ingram has wrestled down immediately. By the way, in the first quarter, Tennessee had a total of 32 yard, uh, yards total offense. And Vanderbilt had 122. The tackle was made there. We'll have to check the tackle on that last play. Ingram caught the ball. It is third down and three. Vanderbilt is running some folks in the secondary that we didn't expect to see and we're trying to find him. Long count by Streeter. Flag goes down. He may have taken too long. He did. Now there's a mistake. 
they don't like to make. Ball on the 28 yard line, they'll move it back. Nothing has gone right for Tennessee thus far. It is third down and eight to go. Ball outside the 32 yard line. Hancock and Ingram both go wide right. And Reggie Harper comes wide to the left. The tight end is split about seven yards to the left. Streeter. Back to throw in trouble but now he's got some open field in front of him. Runs into his own man across the 40 yard line and down he goes first down across the 50. Vanderbilt had good coverage but Streeter just wiggled out of it. First down at the 48 yard line for Jimmy Streeter. A graduating senior. Streeter right there accounted for about 50 or 60 percent of the total of Tennessee's first quarter total offense. Ball at the 48. Ingram wide to the right. Hancock comes to the left. More than 80,000. Very quiet, aren't they? Barry scoots through the line of scrimmage. Myrick and company drag him down along with Sherman. But Barry had a big hole over the center of the line. They'll mark it at the 40 yard line. And that means it'll be second down and two. What they're doing, Jim, is that the Sweeter came in and tried to open up that defense so those linebackers will go into the flats and give them a little bit of a running room up the middle and not put any stunts on the offensive line, and uh, he's doing a good job of it right now. Second down and two. Let's see how Streeter plays it. Does he go to play the pick up the first down, or does he gamble? He's going to run with the football himself, and I think he's got the first down. Joe Staley knocked him down, but Streeter, who had that ankle injury, or rather that knee injury, is hurling himself around pretty well here. First down at the 38-yard line as Tennessee in the second quarter tries to come back from a 10-0 deficit. We told you that Vanderbilt can score. They scored 35 points against Auburn, 28 against Ole Miss, 29 against the Air Force. But gee, they, Alabama scored 66 against them, and Ole Miss scored 63 against them. So we expect to see high scoring today. Streeter, the pitch back in the backfield and in trouble. Down goes Barry at the 40 yard line. And making the play is Sandon, number 94, a freshman out of Tallahassee. Hold to Jacksonville, Florida. Second down and about 13 to go from the 40 yard line. Brisk day in Knoxville. They said there might be some no shows but looking around the stadium now I think nearly all 84,000 are here. Streeter dropping back looking has a man open loops it and then the catch is made at the 22 yard line Reggie Harper the tight end. Inside the 25 yard line down to the 23 yard line first down Tennessee. And that time Streeter had his choice of several open men. Watch how open Harper is on the far sideline. The Vanderbilt defense was cutting to the inside until it was too late when they realized that the throw was to the outside and Harper was there. First down from a 23. Barry. That a swindle up top. But stopped after a gain of perhaps a yard. Second down to nine. Told you about Tom Seiler retiring today. Of the Sentinel. Well, Smokey the Fourth is retiring after today. Their blue tick hound mascot, been around for seven years. They found a tumor. She was operated on, and she is going to be retired after today's final game. Barry again knocked down, and again a fine play. And the ball is picked up. Out of bounds goes to 30. As Streeter. Simpson and Barry they tackled Barry the pitch was to Simpson and watch there's the fake to Barry now watch what happens here's Simpson the ball behind him and it's a good thing this kept on rolling or Vanderbilt would have had its third fumble recovery but the ball is back at the 31 yard line and it is third down and 18 to go 
Tennessee getting an initial squirt from Streeter. Finds itself in a hole now, third, and here's Streeter back throwing, and it's intercepted. He threw right to a Vanderbilt man, and that is Swindoll. Swindoll across the 35-yard line as the ball was fumbled away, and Clemens picked it up and took it. Swindoll, I believe, was trying to get the ball to Clemens. Let's see, but here's Streeter. Now watch, he throws right to this linebacker. There's not another soul there. Now Swindoll comes back. Now he's going to be in trouble. But they get to him and he'll just shovel it on the way down. And that is Coleman that picks it up. And he goes down. Oh, there have been a couple of fumbles and an interception. Van Heflin going deep for Preston Brown. And the ball is caught. Intercepted. Roland James at the 21. Tennessee gets the ball back. Protection. Roland James is will be coming in your pitch. It gets perfect position, and this is the reason why Roland James is a true All-American. Going backwards makes the interception right on the line. Now Tennessee's got a long way, but Vanderbilt stopped him once. It's ten to nothing. I would imagine about the first five minutes of the second quarter. The clock is not working. Streeter, the fake handoff, going deep for Hancock. And the ball is off the hands. Number 42, who is not listed as a starter in the Vanderbilt backfield, but is playing back there. Charles Harris, a sophomore, broke it up. His Streeter going back. He gets excellent protection, makes a good fake. Throws the ball very well, mixing up his plays very well. And the defensive play is, is very, very well by the Vanderbilt defender. Vanderbilt has called timeout with the ball on the 21-yard line. It is second down and long. Vanderbilt has not won in the last 23 Southeastern Conference games. The last game they won, and the only game they won this year, was against the state rival, Memphis State, 13-3. And now they're trying to pull out the big one against the Blue Bonnet, bowl bound Tennessee Volunteers in their big game that goes back 72 contests. Well, ESPN is going to televise hockey for you. I think you know that. We've got a great NCAA hockey game coming up, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and Bowling Green University. And the game will be shown Saturday, next Saturday, December the 8th at 5.30, repeated next Sunday at 7.30 in the morning. Last year, Bowling Green's Falcons finished fifth in the NCAA tourney, and Notre Dame had a record of 18, 19, and 1. Other games coming up in the month of December, Dartmouth, Michigan, Boston University, Brown University, NCAA hockey on ESPN. Ball on the 21-yard line, second down. And 10 to go. Hancock wide to the right, and now steps up as the linebacker steps off the line of scrimmage. I should say the tight end Harper. He starts in motion. Olszewski is back. He throws to Hancock, and it's not going to work. They brought in Olszewski again. Charles Harris again made the stop. From the 22-yard line, it'll be third down and eight. Now Streeter, the quarterback. Hancock goes wide to the right. Looks like Galt has also come in wide right. Streeter goes back to throw. Throws the ball to Hancock. First down, 34-yard line. Tennessee gets out of the hole. Brown runs Hancock out of bounds. Streeter got the ball. Rolling out to roll out pass. He's getting good protection and... Hancock makes a very nice catch out in the flats. Incidentally, they have the Vanderbilt defensive team has gone to a four-man defensive line on that last set. Let's Mike, see if they stay into it. Mike Miller, who is really quick, number 88, comes in and splits out wide to the right for Tennessee. Streeter back to throw. Streeter throws, and Harper can't hold on to it. Second 
Second down. Streeter rolling out and then goes against the grain, Jim. He's got Hopper in the flats. Looks like a very good throw, right where you want to hit him in the numbers and just can't hold on. A very cold day out there today, Jim. How do like hold his on knee ball? came up and hit it, Bob. His knees came so high, it looked like he almost knocked it out of his own hands. Second down and 10 for Tennessee. They're down 10 to nothing. Streeter carrying the football and not very far. Not very far at all. Coleman and Myrick, two of the top men on defense for Vanderbilt. Coleman leads in tackles, and Myrick, an excellent four year strong safety, came up to make the stop. Third down and nine. Coleman did an excellent job on that play right there, containing as well as making the stop. Hancock and Galt both go wide to the right. Harper is split wide to the left on a long yarded situation on third down. Streeter dropping back to throw. Throws for his man. That is Hancock at the 45 yard line. Check that. That's Willie Galt. 26, not 28. Streeter does a good job, Jim, in mixing up his plays. His rollouts into the flats. He's kind of find a, found a home out there in the flats. They're not given a man-to-man -man coverage, but they're given a zone right now, Vanderbilt is. That's Galt's only his second catch of the year, believe it or not, and they think the world of him. Some thought he might even start today. Straight ahead goes Barry, and Barry barrels across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Fine running back, Sane Dunn, made the stop. 84,142 on this cold day. The season has been averaging 85,357. Miller is in again and wide to the right. Second down and about four yards for Tennessee. Streeter taking over from Olszewski with the football, pitches back, and that is Simpson who gets down to the 45-yard line, and that is about all. Tim Moore came over to make the stop, number 69. And that's very close to a first down at the 45-yard line. They have not yet moved the sticks. They may call for a measurement. There is Hubert Simpson, a junior out of Athens, Tennessee. Oh, this is only his fourth start of the year, and yet he is very close to breaking the record for single-season rushing at Tennessee. But he's going to have to have a bigger game in the next two and a half quarters than what he's had so far to break that. Well, especially, Jim, where Vanderbilt is mixing up their defense. They, on that last set, they had the two outside linebackers coming in on a stunt, and they actually were in the six-man defensive line. They've got a couple of inches to go, so Kyle Aguilard, another tight end, comes in as Tennessee, obviously, will go for the first down. At the 45-yard line, they're by, down by the score of 10 to nothing to Vanderbilt, a team they're favored by 26 to beat. Streeter keeps the ball, and that should be enough. Remember, Tennessee has been hampered by an interception a fumble by Vanderbilt that there were four Tennessee men around and Vanderbilt got back and then a fumble by Simpson of Tennessee that set up the touchdown. Vanderbilt's playing very good football. The uh, street is and street has come in Jim. He has moved his plays around a great deal and he has got his team moving. He has moved it on the last series and he's moving it now and uh, he's definitely a big uh, uh, part of the offensive team. There's no doubt about it. Tennessee is walking backwards. And the officials are walking off a penalty of 15 yards, and I saw nothing on that last play. Plus, it was a delayed penalty, Jim. It's going to be that unsportsmanlike conduct, personal foul. That must have come well after the play, because certainly it was called well after the play. You don't think somebody said something, do you, Jim? Could have been. Ball at the 41 yard line first down and 25 to go Tennessee keeps putting itself in the hole. There's Hubert Simpson needs 141 as 23 so far. Streeter Simpson and he's not going to go anywhere is he. The only thing I can believe is number one I think this game probably Bob means more to Vanderbilt because it makes their season than it does to Tennessee because their favorite is a flag down but number two. It might be that Tennessee read the same things that we read. And that is that Vanderbilt can't play defense. 
Well, I definitely agree with you. Uh, Vanderbilt has everything to gain. Tennessee really is expected to win. That's the way it sits. That was not a flag on a play, just a part of an orange jersey on the turf down there. Streeter going back on second down, dropping way back, setting up the screen, and not able to hold on to it is Simpson. He dropped the ball at the 37-yard line. Streeter is standing with his hands on his hips at his own 30. Simpson couldn't hang on to the football. And that means it is third down and 25 to go. I noticed that the tackle number 71 on Vanderbilt, that's uh, Gurley, I believe. He comes in and he kind of harasses Simpson is what he's doing. Simpson has his eye on him instead of the ball, Jim. Good play on that Vanderbilt defense. Third down, Hancock goes wide to the right, Ingram to the left. You know they got to put it up. Streeter straight back to his 35-yard line, puts it up on a fly pattern down field, and it is incomplete. Hancock was the man down there, and it was a fine defensive play made by Jim Sherman going deep with him. And Sherman, I believe it is Sherman that has still not yet gotten up. That's who it is. Streeter makes a very nice pass on this here. But they have man-to-man -man coverage. And Sherman does an excellent job covering. He is going step for step with him. And I just didn't know, Jim, that Sherman was that fast. He really moves his feet. Well, that is Mark Brown who is that fast. And it's Sherman who came over. So 22 and 28 were both there. And it was 22 who made the good play and was still down on the ground. John Warren has come on to kick the ball away. As they're concerned now with the sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, Mark Brown. But I would imagine the more than 84,000 here are concerned with their Tennessee football team. Gurley is from Chicago. Eugene Shaw has not seen any action is from Chicago. Mark Brown is from Chicago. They've all found their way to, what do they call it, Country Music City, Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. Standing deep is Preston Brown. And John Warren will kick the ball away as Mark Brown is up and okay. There is Preston Brown. Again, the clock is not working. Man, look at that kick. Preston Brown's going to let that thing go, and it's going into the end zone. That came within a yard of being an outstanding kick and out of the bounds on the one yard line. That was quite a kick. He had good protection there and he got his foot into it. The ball turned over on him, which is what it's supposed to do. But uh, he not only got it, but he got it against the wind, Jim. He did a super job. From the 20 yard line, Vanderbilt up by 10 over highly favored Tennessee. And Wayman Bugs is in it and it comes out wide to the right. Van Heflin has been an outstanding quarterback today. Pitches the ball back to Potter. Potter across the 20 and picks up five or six yards. A market at the 26-yard line before Roland James, who's very much in evidence here, throws him out of bounds. James has had an outstanding interception and a saving tackle. Yes, he has. You know, uh, Vanderbilt just doesn't look like a one in nine team here. That's all I got to say. They really don't. I talked to some people early on that said Vanderbilt probably was the most discombobulated looking team they saw in early season they'd seen in some years and here they are playing very smart football. McIntyre apparently has got them going and straight ahead first down goes Potter across the 30 yard line. We're well into the second quarter now and Vanderbilt is saying no signs at all of letting up. Brad White made the stop. Look at this hole. Look at this hole. This offensive line of Vanderbilt is excellent. And Phillips, the center, is just doing an outstanding job in blowing these guys out. I'm very impressed. Bugs comes wide to the right. And Heflin fakes the handoff, fakes the pitch out, and picks up the first down across the 40 yard line. Let's check that. He may not have gotten the first down. He may be about a yard shy of the first down as it gets across the 40. Bill Bates, the safety, made the stop. Now they're beginning to make some changes in that Tennessee defense. Mike L. Kofer comes in, and they're taking up Brian Ingram on the defensive line. Let's call it second down and about a yard to go. Again, Bugs wide to the right. Ten to nothing, Vanderbilt. 
a stunner, but it's another big game, and you never can tell. First man through is not given the ball. Van Heflin's got it. It's got the first down at the 50-yard line. Almost the entire Tennessee team went for the first man through Potter, and Roland James came out to make the tackle. Look at this block by this offensive line. to get the pulling guard, number 63, which is Hudgens. Van Heflin just continues to follow Hudgens around. He's got in the flats. And I think if he would have kept going, I think he would have gotten another five, maybe four yards instead of turning up into Roland James. I wonder if you saw that replay, Bob. Danny Spradlin was actually going inside. Heflin was already outside of him. He took the fake to the inside. First down, 10 to nothing, Vanderbilt. ESPN will televise the semifinals and the finals of the Division I Soccer Championship from the University of South Florida down in Tampa. Now we'll show the semifinals live next Saturday at 1 o'clock, repeated next Sunday at 3 a.m. The finals will also be shown live on Sunday. That's next Sunday at 3 p.m., repeated on a week from Wednesday, December the 12th at 2 a.m. And remember, for the first time in Division I history, we have the top four ranked soccer teams in the finals. Indiana, San Francisco, Clemson, and Philadelphia Textile. There is Van Heflin, and on the near sideline, is George McIntyre and on this sideline you can see Johnny Majors and he has to be upset the uh, feller to the left of uh, Johnny Majors the defensive coordinator named Jim Dyer and I'm sure he's making some changes Jim Dyer happens to be what your old roommate right had <laughs> to get in it Atlanta in. that's right all right the pitch out and here he goes that's Mordica out of bounds the market back at the 14 yard line Mordica thought he'd scored but Vanderbilt is turning it on look at Van Heflin take turn around fakes it up the middle runs it down like the old belly series except no one there pitches off to Mordica and Mordica has that speed and just turns it up and the only thing that ends up saving it is James with his speed coming over and knocking him out I tell you, this Vanderbilt team is just very impressive. Roland James has been Tennessee's secondary today. He's been making nearly every play. Time has been called, and I think it is Tennessee that is calling timeout. Uh, Roland James, incidentally, Jim, came from the other side of the field to take him out on that play. He was playing the cornerback on the other side of the field at that point. Incredible Vanderbilt. Well, if they should score here, I can't help but remember in the Tennessee Alabama game Tennessee was up by 17 points at loss to Alabama if Vanderbilt scores here Tennessee might find itself down by 17 points Johnny Majors talking with Steve Davis one of his defensive linemen Now, I think I've heard the public address announcer say five minutes and 15 seconds left in the half. The scoreboard clock not working at all, and Bob Sign not in evidence at all times because sometimes his mic is not working at all. <laughs> From the 14-yard line, Van Heflin has his instructions, comes back. It was Tennessee that called timeout, remember? This Vanderbilt team can move the football. Two tight ends in there, both Smith and McCain. Potter with the football, and he gets maybe a yard, maybe only back to the line of scrimmage before the center of the Tennessee line stacks him up, led by Burns. Now you'll see Van Heflin looking to the sidelines. Over there, Whit Taylor has the signals. He's a backup quarterback, and he signals in what the play is to be. Preston Brown goes wide to the left. Second down. Let's call it about nine. The fake. Van Heflin still on his feet. Now throws out here for Potter. Incomplete at the 12-yard line. Potter found himself betwixt the rock and the hard spot and couldn't turn around the right way. And now suddenly it is third down. Van Heflin moving his feet pretty well out of that quarterback on the veer. Look at this number 76. For uh, it's uh, Hammond with a beautiful block he throws, just overthrew his receiver. But this this offensive line, Jim, I can't speak highly enough about. Frank Mordica, 44 yards on four carries, had nearly a touchdown, but just did step out of bounds. 
This is third down and nine from the 14 yard line for Vanderbilt. The fake to Potter. Van Heflin keeps the football and down near the five yard line goes Van Heflin. It'll be fourth down and a yard or two to go. Ingram made the stop and now comes the question. Do they go for the first down or do they take the three points? Now watch Van Heflin going right down the line, fakes the belly series up the middle, coming right down here, gives a head fake, and then tucks the ball in. And when the tackle is made, they're giving them an extra two yards because they're bringing them forward, which is uh, what they're not supposed to do. Mike Woodard is in again, and this will be a 23-yard field goal attempt. And now the officials take time. I think that might I be think this might be to tell them that they've got what how much time they've got left because they're coming to the near sideline as well as going to the far sideline. There's McIntyre the coach all bundled up across there. Our referee today is James Harper Jr. Taylor to hold. I tell you when Jim Streeter first came in Tennessee showed some signs of life other than that. The defense has been primarily rolling James making saving tackles or an interception and the rest has been all Vanderbilt. That's exactly right. Jim this game means an awful lot to Tennessee. This is for the bragging rights uh, I would say of the state of Tennessee and I know Johnny would like to go after the second hand. 23 yard field goal attempt. Woodard already has a 31 yarder from 23 yards out. It's no good. He missed it. That gives Tennessee a little fire now. They have held him off from scoring as Vanderbilt leads 10 to nothing. Tennessee puts the ball in play at the 20 yard line first and 10. And now Jimmy Streeter will see if he can't get this team moving. This is a fired up Vanderbilt defense that has had a chance to rest. They've not spent a great deal of time on the field. They probably had a chance to adjust themselves because they were getting caught in the in the uh, flats a little bit on the tight end pass. Let's see if they can adjust. Ingram wide right and Hancock to the left. Showing a four man front now. Bobbled on the handoff. Simpson gets the football and maybe a yard or two. Streeter was bobbling the ball as he went back to hand it off. Swindoll made the stop. <laughs> Number 81. Gain of yards, second down to nine. Charles Harris continues to play that right corner spot. And he was a surprise even being in the game. He was not listed on their what they call a two or three deeps. But he's done an outstanding job today. Second down to nine. Streeter still with the football. Streeter looking. Streeter getting outside. Now throws a football and it is caught I believe at the 24 yard line by Reggie Harper. The market at the 24. Eddie Hood immediately made the stop there. Streeter has a great percentage of interceptions. He's been intercepted a bundle of times. 15 16 including today. Yeah and Street is back there passing but he has Hubert Simpson. He just can't see him but Hubert Simpson's open down the field. Got all kinds of uh, room. But he just couldn't see him down there. Third down and six to go from the 24 yard line for Tennessee. Final minutes of the first half. Streeter on the blitz has to put it up and has his man. That's Harper. First down across the 35 to 40 to 41. And Streeter's just now picking himself up. The blitz was on and Harper got loose. And Streeter got the football to him. Street is sitting back there and he actually he's sitting in the pocket is what he's doing. He hasn't scrambled at all and he's got Stanley coming in here fighting him and just sets it in the middle and nobody there. Tennessee would like to score before halftime. That would make it an entirely different second half of this game. Streeter rolling out this way looking firing over here for Harper again. Hold it. That's Hancock and we'll change it again to golf. Not 85 not 28 but 26. Woody Galt makes his second catch of the day. Jim let's take a look at this here and it's a great pass except that I'm not so sure he caught this in bounds. Let's take a close look at this here. He goes up in the air. That one foot's all he needs. That's right it was in. All right I stand corrected. From the 45 yard line Streeter rolling out the same way again. Now throwing again and the ball is tipped. 
and almost intercepted. Back there, Swindoll again. Swindoll has been playing everywhere. He's listed as a lineman and as a linebacker. He had a little help from Coleman, who had the blitz on there coming in from the inside. Second down and 10 from the 44-yard line. Galt goes wide to the right, and Hancock comes to the left. Harper split about four yards to the right. Tennessee trying to get something going. A handoff quickly to Simpson, and Simpson gets inside the 40-yard line before Coleman makes the stop, number 47. Swindoll is there again, number 81. He is everywhere, and it's going to be third down and short. Third and about three at the 38-yard line. And now time is called by Streeter again. Clock has not been working. You see Gary Moore in the same backfield now with Hubert Simpson. And it was some time ago that we heard there were five minutes and 15 seconds to go. They're going to enlarge this stadium to seat more than 90,000 people. The north end, which is to our left, which now has temporary stands, will be enclosed with a first deck. You see two decks as you look around the rest of the stadium, but in the north end to our left, there will just be a lower deck. But still, I would imagine outside of uh, University of Michigan, be one of the biggest stadiums capacity-wise in the country. And they love their football down here, and they're a little upset right now. We're up here in this press box somewhere. We're one of the fools with the windows up. <laughs> <laughs> Ten to nothing Vanderbilt late in the first half. On a chilly day here in Knoxville, Tennessee. They had some snow flurries when we arrived here on Wednesday evening. Temperance has been improving steadily since. Galt goes to the right. Harper's on the right side. Hancock comes to the left. Third down and about three to go. Two down situation. They got to come up with the first down. They want to come up with a score. Streeter sprinting out to the right. Streeter. I don't know if he got to the first down. He'd have to get down to the 35 yard line. I think he's slightly short of that. We have no situation. They're huddling very quickly, so we must be toward the end of the half. With the clock working, not working, we can't tell you whether they're working on seconds or minutes. Streeter pitch back. Simpson, and he's inside the 35 yard line, and that's enough for the first down. That will stop the clock at whatever it is as they move the sticks. Simpson has those 35 yards. He had one good run. Hurry up offense. Streeter firing the ball across the way. And that is Hancock. Stops the clock at the 18-yard line. Streeter is bringing Tennessee down the field. Charles Harris made the stop. What do you think? Tennessee is known for its running game, not its throwing game. And with time running out on them, Streeter has gone to the air and has done an outstanding job. He really has. Vanderbilt has been moving their defense around quite a bit. They're in a four, and they're in what they call a prevent defense right now. Ball drive to the right. Hancock to the left. Streeter hands off to Simpson. Rambles inside the 15 yard line down to about the 13 yard line. Joe Staley in on the tackle. They go Streeter with about 55 seconds left in the game, Jim. He's going up the middle. Great blocking. Streeter going in the end zone, and it is no good. Out of bounds. Harper across the way. Well, we are informed that there's less than a minute to go. Street is back there passing. He's had good protection. They're in the prevent uh, defense, Vanderbilt. Great pass. Just couldn't reach it in time to keep that one foot in. Good try by Harper. All right, it is third down, but more importantly, there's much less than a minute to go. Clock has not been working since the outset of this game. 18 seconds they now tell us left. Galt in motion to the right. Streeter flooding that side, looking to that side, now looking back the other way, and he's not going to get away. He dropped the football. Going to be covered by Vanderbilt. And there goes the Tennessee chance. 
They had a ball inside the 20 yard line, first down at the 18, and they did not score. This is a great play on the part of Vanderbilt. They get all the receivers covered. Street is coming out to the right, looking to pass, trying to find somebody. The Vanderbilt defense got them all covered man to man. He gets hit here by Clemens. Beautiful play. And looks like uh, Clemens recovered the ball. That's not bad, is it? Caused the fumble <laughs> and recovered about eight yards downfield. Now the time has run out. Well, talk about momentum. It looked like Tennessee might score. And listen to this. The Blue Bonnet Bowl Tennessee team is being booed as it leaves the field at the half. 26-point underdog Vanderbilt, which has won one game, 10. Jim Simpson, Bob Sign, you never can tell about a big game. Vanderbilt leads as the kickoff for the second half is about to take place. It's 10 to nothing. Woodard to kick the ball off. That is Gary Moore at the 11-yard line. Moore to the 20. Moore gets across the 25 and out to the 28-yard line, where it is first and 10 for Tennessee. Breaking onto the field. Olszewski started the game, but has not been back there since midway. And now we see that Jimmy Streeter, not expected to play much today. Number six is in there. James Berry, 34. Hubert Simpson, 32, the running backs. Bill Ingram, number four. Hancock, 28. The wide receivers. Reggie Harper, the fine tight end, is 85. Streeter on first down gives the ball to Berry, who gets to the 30-yard line before Ricky Dean and Rodney Gurley make the tackle. The offensive line... Sutton, Marin, Lee North, the fine sophomore, Mike Jester, and Tiny Tim Irwin. He only weighs about 260 and is 6'7". Second down and seven from the 30-yard line. Ingram and Hancock both go wide to the right. Harper's on the left side. What a surprise the first half. You think Vanderbilt will keep it up? Streeter pitching back, and they're playing it beautifully, but Simpson breaks the tackle and gets across the 30 and... Near a first down. Myrick almost had him. And they'll mark the ball at the 34-yard line. Well, ESPN among its affiliates, we have some right in Knoxville, Tennessee. So they'll be watching this game. And after reading the papers on Sunday morning, they'll be watching the first half in disbelief. I wonder how it's going to turn out. It will be different. Third down and nearly four to go. Streeter has been relying on the pass a lot. Is passing again, and a fine catch made by Hancock at the 43-yard line. That moves the sticks. First down, Tennessee. This is Streeter. He's in a pro set. He's rolling out to the left. Now he has a one-man receiver. That means he knows who's going to he's going to throw to. He's not looking at anybody else, and he throws to Hancock. Hancock makes a great diving catch. He's coming out throwing the second half. Now both Galt and Hancock are wide to the right on first down from the 43-yard line. Streeter's had great success through the air, goes to the running game, and doesn't have too much success, does he? That's Hubert Simpson not having a great day at all. And there's that fella Swindoll again. Phil has been in a lot of plays. A junior out of Atlanta plays both linebacker and defensive line. Second down and seven to go. Phil Swindoll, uh, Jim, has has just played an outstanding game. He is all over the field. He goes from one side to the other, just doing a super job. They've got a five-man front in there now on second down for Tennessee. Straight ahead, Barry. And boys, he stood up and run into the backfield. Fine play by Andrew Coleman, number 47. The linebacker just simply stood him up. Jim, he certainly did. He came in there heavy. That hauls. That Coleman has been all over the field also, but he is great straight ahead. He does an uh, outstanding job in reading the keys, and he just seemed to know that he was going to get the ball that time, and that's all there was to it. Staley, Dean, Gurley, Moore, and Clemens. The forward wall for Vanderbilt in this 10-0 game. Ingram in motion to the right. It is third down and long yardage. Streeter's got running room, but chooses to throw the ball. And a flag is thrown, and that's a good flag. Eddie Hood had actually made the tackle with Hancock. Streeter could have 
run perhaps for the first down, but watch, you'll see Hood make the tackle. Street back pass. He has three receivers on the right-hand side. He doesn't know who he's going to go to. But Ernie Hood made the tackle a little bit too quick. Boy, the, quick. the shadows give us fits here in University of Tennessee Stadium, don't they? Boy, they do. All that darkness down there, they're going from sunlight into dark. But the ball is at the 41-yard line. Ingram wide to the right. Streeter has had an exceptional day throwing the ball. He did throw one interception. Now he's being chased by Dean. Loops it for Hancock. Touchdown! This is Streetham. He's sitting back like he's going to roll out to the right, then to the left. Now he sets up and just throws it straight downfield. They had man to man coverage, and Hancock just outran his man, made a nice catch. Man to man coverage. They've gone from the zone to a strictly man to man Vanderbilt has. Now to dunk it in to kick the extra point. And the kick is good. And now that kind of makes it a different game, doesn't it? Tennessee came out with Streeter throwing, moved the length of the field, touchdown on a 40-yard play to Anthony Hancock, and it's 10-7 Vanderbilt. I think what you're going to see, Jim, just like you and I discussed at halftime, is that is that uh, Sweet is going to come out and pass like he's doing right here. Here's the touchdown pass again. 71 giving good pursuit, which is girly. It's a very good pass, right on target. And uh, the man-to-man -man coverage is just not doing it for Vanderbilt. That's that Charles Harris that we said was a surprise starter and that as a cornerback, trying to keep up with Hancock and could not. Deep, Preston Brown back there, along with Marcus Williams, 32 at 18, and Alan Duncan to kick it off. Now, Tennessee's fans think they've got it going in high gear. Vanderbilt's fans are hoping such is not the case. They were denied a touchdown when Streeter fumbled a ball. They had a first down inside the 17 at the end of the first half. Now, this is going to be Preston Brown. He's got a lot of speed, remember. The opening up the middle gets across the 20 to the 23, and that's about all. Now, let's see how Van Heflin and company will do. Van Heflin, number seven. Terry Potter, 45. Frank Mordica, 35. Your backfield. Preston Brown, the wide receiver, number 32. Two tight ends, Joey Smith, 82, and Joe McLean, 84. And the Tennessee fans come alive. They want the team to get over this nonsense and demonstrate that they're a true bowl team. Van Heflin turns it upfield and gets across the 25-yard line. Now, that did not look like much, but that's about a four-yard gain and will be second down and six. Hale leading the way with the block and Brian Ingram making the stop. Second down and six. The ball at the 27-yard line. Brisk, windy day, Knoxville, Tennessee. Vanderbilt with the ball looking for its first Southeastern Conference win since 1975. Wayman Bugs has come in and Preston Brown is out as a wide receiver. Van Heflin in a crowd. Third down. Again, it'll be third down and about four to go. Brad White made the tackle. Tennessee, Jim, is in a strong six-man up front line. Very tight. And I think Van Heflin's going to have to do is he's going to have to go ahead and roll out and open that up a little bit because he's not having very much success right now. He is going, well, the wind now is about a crosswind, but it is a strong wind coming in the open end. Heflin going the other way now, and he is in trouble, and down he goes. Play made by Brad White, number 90 again. Vanderbilt will have to kick out way the ball again, and Tennessee will get the ball again. Roland James goes deep. It'll be Jim Arnold to kick the ball away. The wind, if anything, is at his back. Standing back on his own 15-yard line. Roland James deep. He's back at his 32-yard line. 
Arnold has the time, drills the ball, and it's going to be over James's head. Goes back and finally loses it out of bounds inside the 20, and that's a break for Mandeville. The ball at the 18-yard line. That ball took off, and the wind took it, Bob, and just like a bullet. Well, James knew that he was 20 yards behind him was the goal line, and the ball could go out in the five or the four. So he did the best thing that uh, he could do, and I think he did the right thing myself. Vanderbilt's defense talking it up while the Tennessee fans, more than 84,000 of them, pep up their team. They're down by three, but at halftime it was 10. Hancock wide to the left, set inside of him is Ingram. Let's see if Streeter throws way down here. Nope, he's going to give it away to Simpson, and Simpson gets across the 20. Where Andrew Coleman made the tackle. Simpson and Coleman, well, I should say Simpson and Barry, are having problems. It's through the air that Jimmy Streeter has been picking apart Vanderbilt. Now, for the first time today, we see Terry Daniels come in, number 43. Into the backfield for Tennessee. 10 to 7, clock not working. We're in the third quarter in Knoxville, Tennessee. Streeter hands the ball off and straight ahead. Gurley makes the stop of James Berry at the 25-yard line. And it'll be third down and three to go. Ball just shy of the 25. Street is going to have to establish his ground game, and that's what he's attempting to do right now, Jim. But uh, you're going to see him coming out throwing on this uh, play, I do believe. Hancock goes to the right, and Ingram comes to the left. Streeter looking for Ingram over fires him. Hood was there, but it looked like Streeter had a step or uh, Ingram had a step on him. But Streeter overthrew him, and it's fourth down. And quickly onto the field comes John Warren to kick the ball away, and he will be kicking against a win. As deep goes Preston Brown. Van Heflin on the far sideline. He should get good field position when he comes out as number seven. Warren kicks the ball straight up in the air and short. A bounce and get a Tennessee bounce inside the 40 yard line down to about the 35 to 34 and it is going to be fairly good position for Vanderbilt as they come out first and 10. 10 to 7 third quarter in the big game of Tennessee. Funny thing in some of the press today they were talking about the fact that Alabama is the big game for Tennessee. I guess they're looking right past Vanderbilt for Vanderbilt. This is the big game. Van Heflin and company. Nowhere, Mordica. Absolutely nowhere. The all-time leading ground gainer for Vanderbilt hardly got back to the line of scrimmage. Kenny Jones, Brian Ingram. In on the stop, Jones 99, Ingram 84. And it's second down. At about 10. Tennessee definitely adjusted their defense at halftime. Coach Dyer probably told them to come on in tight. Let's give them the outside and close it in. If we can pursue, we'll pursue. But uh, let's not give them anything up the middle from tackle to tackle. Preston Brown, they've gone to him once today. Lightning speed, split wide to the right. And Heflin holds on to the football and is hit in the backfield. Hit in the backfield by number 40. Looks like Bill Bates. The safety who's been playing tight to that line throughout the game. Well, they definitely are playing tight. The whole uh, defensive line and the outside linebacker. And here comes Van Heflin, but the blocker, I didn't catch who it was, missed the block. And uh, Van Heflin just had no place to go. Third down and long, about 14 to go. Looks like Van Heflin will have to put it up. Drops straight back, this time has the time, has the man, and that is Wayman Bugs, and Bugs is at the 40-yard line, and that is not enough for the first down. He's got to get to the 43, and he is mad about that. Well, he is quick. He's one of the quicker boys on the team. Bugs get down there, and it's a straight back pass. He, no rollout involved, no one near him. They're in the zone defense. They're not covering man-to-man, -man, as you can see. And all he had to do was turn his head the other way, and we would have had it. 
Roland James, the man deep. Jim Arnold to kick the ball away. This is an end over ender that's going to force Roland James back to his 12 yard line. And if he gets outside there, he's got a long way to go. Across the 30, across the 40, and is hit down. And now he's got a clear field ahead of him. One man's got the angle. Touchdown, Roland James. gets the ball coming inside knocks into his own men here's where he makes a real good move just just too quick for those defensive linemen coming after him puts on the speed now he's waiting he's waiting for his blockers to come up there's one man in between he and the touchdown right now there it is all right 82 should have had him didn't he have him James just keeps going one block there and it's all over He's not only a quick athlete and a uh, great sprinter, but he's a very strong one. Joey Smith will all remember the tackle he missed that would have held James up inside the 40-yard line. Now, just like that, Vanderbilt, which led at halftime 10-0, finds itself down 13-10 with Alan Duncan in to kick the extra point. And now Van Heflin. And the Vanderbilt squad will have to show what they're made. As it is 14 to 10. The heroics by Roland James. Jim, it looks like we're seeing two games here today. The first half and now. Vanderbilt looked exceptional in the first half. And Tennessee not only stopped itself but Vandy did a good job of stopping them in the second half Vanderbilt hasn't been able to pick up a first down Tennessee has picked up a touchdown moving the football with throwing the ball Hancock getting the last pass of about 40 yards and now another big play about 88 yards Roland James so when you go into the locker room after a loss like that and they say the big play killed us you know what they mean yes I do I sure would like to know what coach major said at the halftime I bet that was interesting Alan Duncan to do the kicking. Norman Jordan is back along with Preston Brown. Williams is not there. Jordan's number is 34. 605 to go, third quarter. We got that word from the field where as we're looking at the scoreboard clocks, which are not working. But Tennessee's got itself working now. Duncan kicks the ball away. And this is Preston Brown again with a chance for a kickoff return of his own. Sees a little move up the middle. Had to move back inside. And the tackle was made as he got across the 30-yard line by number 42, Val Barksdale. It's first and 10. And now we'll see what the Commodores of Vanderbilt can do. The ball on their own 33. They're down for the first time in the ball game. They led by 3-0, 10-0. Missed a 23-yard attempt that would have made it 13-0. Now find themselves down 14 to 10. Preston Brown wide to the left. And Heflin hands the ball off to Frank Mordica, who with one big exception today, when he just stepped out, or he might have gone all the way for a touchdown, Mordica has been almost negated today by the Tennessee defense. That's right. But I don't understand the offensive uh, plays of Vanderbilt, Jim. They ran outside well. They threw on the run well. Van Heflin had the rollout off the veer very well, and they're not doing that at all the second half. Ball at the 36-yard line, second down and seven to go. Van Heflin, long time. Now he is just confused and says, hold it, timeout. Timeout. And he'll probably go to the bench. No, he's not going to the bench. He's looking to the bench. They called time on him. He took too long. So that's the five-yard penalty. He didn't call time. They did. Now from the 29. 
Vanderbilt has gone from a team that's been pepped up running the football throwing it as Bob said the team that looks slightly confused and gets called for too much time. And Heflin gets back out to the 34 yard line where they'll have about seven to eight yards to go. Bill Bates number 40 again made the tackle. And it is third down. Or else Vanderbilt will have to give it up again. Brown comes to the right. Big play time for Van Heflin and Vanderbilt. And Van Heflin rolls this way, has the time, fires the ball, first down. The Brown at the 45 yard line with four yellow, oh, oh will they kill me for that, orange jerseys around him. <laughs> Never told him I was colorblind. Did I watch this play? This is a, a design pass, straight back pass. He knows who he's going to throw to all the time. He's not even moving his head, as you can see. And it is a perfect pass. And this is what Vanderbilt's going to have to do more of, a little bit more of this to get back in this game. All on the 46-yard line. First down, Vanderbilt. The Commodores can move the football. They've done it against most teams. Well, Vanderbilt Van Heflin couldn't even make the handoff there. He was so jammed up, I have no idea whether he wanted to make the handoff or just fake it, but he couldn't have made it had he wanted to. That's right. Tennessee just jammed him up. Bill Bates, again, the safety playing right along the line of scrimmage, doing an effective job. He's listed as a free safety. Starts out on the backfield, but he's been closing fast. Second down and nine. There it is, and Flavius Joey Smith has turned the wrong way at the 40-yard line. Would have been a first down, and now they find third and long. Good pass protection. Ben Heflin out there. Good pass, but to the wrong side of the receiver. In comes Wayman Bugs, number eight. Says something to Van Heflin. Out goes John McCain. A tight end. Vanderbilt wants to get something going. Look out! There's the ball. It is loose. It is picked up by Vanderbilt. But they're saying the arm was forward. And I would question that. It looked to me like he actually fumbled a football. In any event, Vanderbilt got it back. Let's watch. Look at this here. He's setting up. But I'll tell you one thing. It don't look like he's ready to throw. Oh, yes, he yes, is. He We're is. wrong again. Well, I'll tell you, I'm having a bad day up here. <laughs> And the ball is subsequently recovered, had it been a fumble, by Vanderbilt, which means it's a kicking situation. And Jim Arnold comes on to kick it away to Roland James. Oh, my. Woo! James just watches that go into the end zone. That's better than a 50-yard punt with that strong wind behind it. So Tennessee up by four, gets the football back at the 20-yard line. First and ten. Our final week of the regular collegiate football season and coming up basketball lots of it here on ESPN. The folks from Tennessee they're going to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. I think I told you that when it was announced that they were in the Blue Bonnet Bowl the Purdue Daily newspaper came out and said what are we doing in a bowl against Tennessee. Well Tennessee's trying to prove that they got a ball club it'll get Purdue the Boilermakers. A run for it. Setting up a screen out here, and it's going to be a loss to Simpson of maybe nine yards, perhaps only eight. John Clemens smelled out that screen, and Simpson goes down. Clemens has played one whale of a game today. Simpson wears the same number as O.J., who apparently is playing his last year of professional football after his outstanding collegiate and professional career. O.J. apparently is going to hang it up. And as always, they say he is going out with style and class. Hancock and Ingram wide to the right. On second down and 18 to go. Olszewski started, but it's been Streeter. And there goes Simpson who gets across the 15-yard line to the 16-yard line, where Andrew Coleman made the stop. And it's third down and 14 to go. Or Vanderbilt will get the ball in pretty fair position if 
Tennessee's forced to kick it away I would think because the wind is, would be right in the face of the kicker. In the fourth quarter Tennessee will be going with the wind. This time Hancock comes left and Ingram goes right. 14 to 10 Tennessee. Streeter throwing it. Has his man Hancock. Foot race touchdown. Over 80 yards. Another big play Tennessee. Hancock has caught two touchdown passes and both have been big bombs. Play. Jim Streeter going straight back. Drop back pass. Has plenty of time. Great protection. Hancock put one move on his cornerback and just was just outraced him. Never a question. Great combination. Streeter to Hancock. This Hancock got some great speed. Allen Duncan in to kick the extra point. Vanderbilt. Here's the Vanderbilt defense we've been hearing about. They've given up 21 points in the third quarter. And all three scoring plays have been bombs. Two of them of 80 yards or more. And now Tennessee has a little running room, as they like to say, 21 to 10. And now Van Heflin will really have to put the ball in the air. He's going to have to stay in the air or go outside. He's just not going to be able to run the ball up the middle on this adjusted Tennessee defense. But uh, Vanderbilt got a lot of class. They've shown me some class the first half, and I think we've got some more offense coming up, Jim. And remember, as you know, Bob, Vanderbilt does score points. They can score points. Williams and Brown are deep. And Duncan will kick off late in the third quarter. Clock not telling us any time at all. It has not since the beginning of the game. So we'll simply say late in the third quarter, in Knoxville on the campus of Tennessee or couldn't you tell by the sound of the fans when Hancock took that pass and raced for the score. Duncan Preston Brown at the three ten. Uh oh. There was a Tennessee man absolutely blocked out of the play and Preston Brown ran right into him and from the ground he made the tackle. I don't understand that at all. Preston Brown had plenty of runner room to his left or to his right Jim. And yet he preferred to go up the middle over the man who was blocked out of the way. Watch this. Here he is. Going up right up the middle. Blocked him out of the way and yet still goes right in that way. Ball right. is on the 13 yard line. Well, it's a long way now for Vanderbilt. They need a big play of their own. They've given up three tremendous plays. And Eflin throwing on first down has a man wide open and doesn't hit him. Had his tight end John McCain wide open and threw behind him. Wait. Second down and ten. Jimmy had great protection. No one near him. Plenty of time. The man was open. That's the kind of thing that happens when you get a little bit rattled. Vanderbilt's offense. We talk about the defense giving up 21 points third quarter. The offense has not been able to do anything at all here in the third quarter. And now coming out to the 20 and still on his feet across the 25 and that's enough for a first down. Roland James makes the stop of Terry Potter who was very good in the early going and we haven't seen much of him since. There was a great hole opened up for Terry Potter that time. Roman James coming over from his free safety which is where he's playing right now made the tackle. Ball on the 27 yard line. Lots of time left. Better than a quarter to go. 21 to 10. Tennessee all 21 points for the balls in this quarter. Hand off. Nope. Van Heflin keeps it for himself and gets across the 30 yard line. He does run that beer well. And the flag went down. Flag went down right in the middle of the pile. And let's see what this is. Tennessee was pointing at Vanderbilt and Vanderbilt's walking toward Tennessee. Now Tennessee's got the idea they're turning around the other way. Usually when a quarterback carries a ball and a bunch of people go down on him if it's a flag it's usually against a defensive team. Jim one of the major adjustments that Tennessee made at halftime was on the middle guard Mark Burns who is a freshman. 
He played the whole first half. They do not have him in there now. But they do have uh, Carlton Gunn in there right now. Ball on the 45 and a half yard line. First Jim, down. This is the May quarterback, the second string quarterback White, that's calling the offensive signals from the sideline for Vanderbilt. And Heflin has his man, and this time Joey Smith hangs on to the football at the 45 yard line. That's almost enough for a first down, and Van Heflin goes to the air. Flavius Joey Smith, a junior from Cooksville, Tennessee, where his father is a doctor. Second down and short yardage, perhaps a half a yard. Vanderbilt trying to show that the Commodores are not done yet. Preston Brown comes wide to the right. I'm sure that offense with Van Heflin and Mordecai Potter believes in itself. And Heflin fakes the pitch out. Everybody screams, but he's got the first down, which is a big deal. Bill Bates makes the stop. First down at the 43-yard line of Tennessee. This state is really fired up with its football team. For Johnny Majors, has had two great recruiting years. Some say the best in the country. Vanderbilt, looking at Tulane, another big independent like itself, and how it's come back to a 9-2 season, says, we can do the same thing. Straight ahead goes Terry Potter for a yard or so. I keep looking at Preston Brown working on Wilbur Jones and wondering if they will go to him because Preston Brown has got blazing speed. And that is the end of the third quarter. Third quarter's all over, and for Tennessee, it was a great one. They got 21 points, two long passes to Hancock, and the 88-yard punt return by Roland James. At the end of three quarters, it is... Vanderbilt 10, but Tennessee 21. Jim Simpson, Bob Sign, fourth quarter. Vanderbilt has a second down and nine to go from the 43, and there might have been some movement in the Vanderbilt line. That's what Tennessee is saying, and Vanderbilt must agree to that, a legal procedure of motion, and so it's a five-yard penalty. Harry Potter has been the big ground gainer today for Vanderbilt. Looked like Mike Ralston. The quick tackle was a little bit too quick on that. And so it's going to be second down and 14. And Mordica goes out. And Mike Dunster comes in for Vanderbilt. Number 20. In there with Potter. You wonder whether or not Mordica's come in to block. Or whether they're going to use him on some kind of running play. He looks like he's trying to get out of the backfield. Van Heflin's going back over here to Potter. He's in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. That's a loss of five yards on the play back to Vanderbilt territory. And now it is third at about 20. That was a misdirection play, and I gotta say something, that was misdirected. We had a lot of white jerseys downfield, but we had no white jerseys blocking the uh, orange jerseys. There's Van Heflin trying to get some kind of thing going. Waylon Bugs is coming to tell him what it is. Bugs last time was mad at himself. He got within about two yards of the first down, made the catch. But it was fourth down. Mad that he had not gone far enough downfield. Well, he's got to go about 20 yards downfield this time. And Heflin has time, delivers the football, and it's intercepted by Spradlin. Number 50, the linebacker at the 38-yard line. And Van Heflin is picked off for the first time. And for only the eighth time all year long. Look at this defensive alignment. They got a three-man rush, Jim. Three-man rush on the prevent defense back there. Put a lot of pressure on him. No way he'd get the ball through. Preston Brown, the intended receiver, made the stop. But Tennessee's got the 11-point lead and has the football at the 38-yard line. Long count by Streeter. Dropping back on first down. This is a surprise. Over through Harper, and right there was number 22, Mark Brown, with a possible chance for an interception but couldn't get to it. But you'd think up by 11, first down, 38-yard line. Tennessee would stick to the ground, but Streeter loves it. He's having good success in the air. He says, I got something to prove to those Purdue people, I imagine. He says, they think we're not. <laughs> Who is this Mark Herman anyway? <laughs> Let me get a handle on him. <laughs> That'll be down in Houston in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Second down and 10, and look at this. Everybody coming this way. The pitch back. And knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line is Terry Daniels, number 43. Knocked out of bounds there by Jim Sherman, a sure tackler. 
for the Vanderbilt team in the secondary. Third down and a long two yards to go. Ball just over the 45. They've got to nudge it over the 48. It's hard to believe that we're in the first month of December, first week of December, the holiday month that sights the end of the regular NCAA football season and begins the basketball season. Now, time does fly when you're having fun, right? Right. Streeter, pitch back, Barry going nowhere. Matter of fact, he lost on the play. Now it's fourth down, and unless Tennessee is really in a gambling mood, Vanderbilt's going to get the ball back. Swindoll, Moore, and Brown all in on the stop. And John Warren has already broken out onto the field. And so Preston Brown goes deep to take the ball for Vanderbilt. So the interception by Van Heflin, he's got to feel a little better. The defense held Tennessee. And he'll get another shot. It'll be difficult to tell when there's a flag on the play. There's all kinds of paper, debris on the field, very high, and Preston Brown a better call for a fair catch there at the 13-yard line. What is first and ten? I would imagine, since the scoreboard clock isn't working, there are about 13 minutes of playing time left. I would imagine that even though they're back on their 13, Vanderbilt has got to do something. Bob sign other than just trying to break Mordica or Potter across the line of scrimmage inside the ends. They're going to have to go back to putting the ball into the flats, not the bomb. They're not that far down. They got plenty of time. Into the flats is their forte right now. And Heflin hands the ball off to Mordica, and he's got some running room and gets across the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and short. We've heard so much about Frank Mordica, the all time Vanderbilt ground gainer and we've seen so little of him this year and in this game he's not only a big strong guy with a lot of pizzazz in him, but he has some good moves Jim and uh, he's going to do very well in the pros I can tell you he can get the outside game if he has to second down they're going to try Mordick again the same play and he breaks it this time across the 30 yard line and he's got a first down going behind Hale and Hammond and Bolton came up to make the stop. Tennessee's in a three-man down line position. They got the middle wide open. They're anticipating pass all the way. And uh, Van Heflin's fooling them and coming up the middle of Mordecai. Brown wide to the right. First down from the 32-yard line. 21-10 to 10 Tennessee in the big game of the Volunteer State. Now they don't have three down linemen. And this time, across the 35-yard line goes Mordecai. Slightly different defense there, and Brian Ingram, 84, made the tackle. They came into the six-man defensive line, Tennessee did, which is exactly what they came out the second half with to shut down the run of Vanderbilt, and apparently they're going back into it right now. But watch out for those flats with Van Heflin rolling out off of that veer. Whit Taylor's no longer flashing the messages, the plays to Van Heflin. The wide receivers are bringing them in to him. And here comes Mordica. Across the 40-yard line, stops the clock at the 41-yard line, and it is going to be third down and a yard or so to go. Chris Bolton, number 61, a linebacker, made the stop. Well, here's a big play for Vanderbilt. They've moved the ball from deep in their own territory, inside their own 15, across their 40. They now have third down and a yard to go. Oh, my, Van Heflin's got more than enough for the first down. Moves into Tennessee territory. There's that veer that you're talking about and how well he runs it. Steve Davis made the stop. If uh, Van would have uh, kept to the outside, uh, he would have got about another five to ten more yards. But he cut inside and went against the grain, which uh, they were waiting on him, coming over to pursue from the linebackers. Potter, Mordick in the backfield, Bugs wide to the right. Oh, Van Heflin almost tripped, and now Mordica does a good job to get onto the ball. Boy, lost it once, almost a loss of the second time, and that's a loss back to the midfield. Here's Van Heflin tripping into his uh, halfback there, which definitely was a mix-up in signals, and then the pass, Mortimer never had control of the ball. Then okay. he lost it again. Look at this. Get it now, Frank. You got it. <laughs> I don't want it. You take it. 
Ball at the 50 yard line. Brown has come in now. Bugs is out there running in the plays with Bugs and Brown from the sidelines. So they'll alternate on early every play. And now, as Van Heppen got up there, he said, What? Not quite sure about this whole situation. So Vanderbilt calls timeout. The ball at midfield. The score, Tennessee 21, all in the third quarter. Vanderbilt 10, all in the first half. But Vanderbilt was actually denied toward the end of the half. Johnny Majors along the sideline. I reminder that ESPN has a first, at least for our young network, and that is we're going to have the North American Team Rodeo Championships from Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Twisters of Tulsa against British Columbia, who won the Canadian Team Rodeo Championship in 1979 earlier this year. And the Twisters of Tulsa will represent the United States. The game will be shown Saturday, December the 8th at 8.30 a.m., repeated on Wednesday, December the 12th at 9 p.m. Rodeo action. That's a good idea to have it on Saturday morning. Some of the youngsters around the house would like to see Cowboys ride the Brunken Broncos, try to get the steers, wrestle the steers down. Mordica tries that play that works so well, but against that defense, it's not going to work. Brad White made the tackle, and now they're in a third and very long situation. Ball at right at midfield. They've got to get it across the 37 yard line of the University of Tennessee. Well, Tennessee has come into their, their uh, now they're in a three-man defensive line. They've gone back to that. And Mike Dunster's come in. Last time he tried to get out of the backfield. This time he's staying. Nope, now he's coming out of the backfield. Look out. Down it goes. And that is another hit by Brad White, who's had an outstanding game. And I think they're going to rule this one a fumble, not an incompleted pass. And so they'll have to kick it away. Watch Brad White fight off that tackle. He doesn't have a chance that offensive tackle. Brad White coming in. Van Heflin doesn't even see it. Oh, that hurts. That definitely is a fumble, Jim. That's the kind of stuff Bob Sound like he used to have to do. I used to be six foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> now Arnold to kick the ball away. He is kicking against the wind, and it is not a good kick. Now Varksdale watches it go out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. And now the momentum has definitely shifted to the orange side of the field. That is Tennessee. Had trouble in the first half. Got 21 points on three big plays in the third quarter. Leading 21 to 10. And now with the football and with the lead. And Vanderbilt in the second half has not been able to put anything at all offensively together. Streeter has gone nearly all the way after they told us he might see some action. Gary Moore and Terry Daniels, 33 and 43. Are the backs now James Berry and Hubert Simpson apparently getting a rest waiting for Purdue and the Blue Bonnet Bowl down in Houston Texas. You look down the lineup. They're going to bring the ball back for a moment. Now this is another one of those delayed calls here and I'm wondering what this is. They're bringing the ball all the way back. Now how many minutes has it been one or two since right. they got the ball down there. That's right. I did not see a flag. Jim. I did not. Well, you can't with all the debris that's on the field. But this reminds me of that California Stanford game. Touchdown scored, disallowed. And about three minutes later, they said touchdown. Now, there was a kick here, and the penalty apparently is on Tennessee, but they do get the football because it was kicked to them. And if it's a personal foul, it's going to be at least the fourth. No holding is called. Well, that is a delayed call. That had to be after the punt and after Tennessee got be. the ball. And it also has to be after about two or three minutes <laughs> <laughs> standing around. That's right. Because there's no flag. I was just looking down Tennessee. They've got so many freshmen and sophomores at so many skilled positions that this is going to be some kind of team that Johnny Majors is putting together down here in Knoxville. Ingram is wide to the right. That moves the ball all the way back inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. Remember Daniels and Moore the setbacks. And Streeter coming out and he's going to throw the ball intended for Ingram at the 29 yard line in hot pursuit was Mark Brown incomplete second down and that's the second time deep in his own territory that Streeter on first down has opened up with a pass. Well, Streeter is a pretty good rollout quarterback but uh, I'm surprised he's throwing way down there and especially in the type of a defense that the Vanderbilt Commodores are in right now. They're in pass defense. They're anticipating pass. 
and uh, Street is going to have to think about his ground game right now. Second down, 10, over 200 yards passing. He's also run for a bundle. Streeter's by the back, and straight ahead goes number 43, Terry Daniels. Another sophomore out of Miami, Florida, gets across the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and about six to go. Clemens and Dean made the stop, and it looks like Daniels is limping just a little bit as he comes back to the huddle. See the shadows as they spread over the field here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Strader coming out as time has been called. Coming out to see what it is he should try to do on third down and about six. A reminder that the basketball season starts this weekend. We've been showing you international basketball, men's and women's. Speaking of that here in Knoxville, the Soviet women were extremely impressive. And they're moving on, and you'll see them against other teams here, UCLA, Old Dominion, Delta State on ESPN, but the NCAA men start also. Got more than 150 of those games coming up. That's just what it says. Exciting college basketball all season long. In our first month, we will have UCLA, Louisville, Brigham Young, and North Carolina on our network, and check your standings. They're right up there in the top ten, all four that I just mentioned. Well, the star of the show, I would have me imagine, would be the fellow in your picture right there, Jimmy Streeter. He's come out, did not start. Jeff Olszewski started. Streeter came out, threw the ball, and Hancock has hauled in two long passes for touchdowns, one of 40 and one of 80. And, of course, Roland James returned upon 88 yards, and that's the story for Tennessee. Vanderbilt came by theirs a little bit harder. Streeter back. Streeter looks like he's going to throw, and he's not going to get it. Gets back to the 21-yard line, and it's fourth down. And Vanderbilt, and I wish we could check on the time again. Vanderbilt still has time, Bob Son. Yes, they do. And uh, Gurley, uh, Gurley made a very nice play on that. He contained from Streeter going outside. But Vanderbilt's got a little class, and I think they might come back and show just a little bit. John Warren back to kick, and Preston Brown is deep. If he can break off one of his long runs that he's so capable of doing, it becomes a different ball game again. They rush the kicker. Brown comes over, watches the ball, and now wisely lets them down it right there on the 26-yard line. About nine minutes to go, they tell us, in the ball game. And Van Heflin and Vanderbilt will try to get going. And little things like, pardon me, Bob, but Frank Mordecai just stepping out of bounds. Later, they didn't get the 23-yard field goal. What a difference that would have made for Vanderbilt. I think that that definitely would have gave him another big lift. But the second half, Tennessee just came out here determined, regardless of what was going to happen, they were going to come out and show that they are a bowl-bound team. Well, that's just a team, Tennessee, that was down 17 nothing themselves, or up, I should say, to Alabama and lost. So they realize what it's like. And I'm over here on this side, Wayman Bugs, I believe, moved and then stopped. And the official, he made a mistake. He did it right in front of an official. He's about a half a yard away. 8.15 to go in the game is now the official time. First and 15, that doesn't really mean too much more to Vanderbilt. They got to go the length of the field and in a hurry and get a score on the board. Bugs again comes to the left and Brown goes to the right. And straight ahead goes Terry Potter for just a couple of yards. A few yards when they needed 15 and 30 or 40 seconds off the clock. It's going to be very important for them to get the ball in the air, but one of the things, Jim, that's going to be very important to Vanderbilt is that they have used two timeouts already. Another thing is that they are going against the wind, but we remember that Jimmy Streeter's two touchdown passes were against the wind. Now Van Heflin back to throw. Rose has his man there and overthrows it is intercepted by Bates. Bates across the 30-yard line. Bates down to the 20-yard line and knocked down. First down at the 18-yard line. The market at the 17. Bill Bates comes up with his first interception of the year. He has had an outstanding game today, tackling, forcing from a safety position. But look at this. Look at Bates run with this ball. He has that ball tucked in. He's not going to let anybody move it. And he's going to put his shoulder and head down, telling his boys to, hey, get out of the way. Let me run this ball here. Look at that. 
put his head in 63. Super run back. 21 to 10, and now Tennessee trying to administer the coup d'etat and leave here with a 7 and 4 season heading for the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Straight ahead, there he goes, touchdown, and that's Terry Moore. Right up the middle. 18 yards. Here it is, his streeter. Vanderbilt's in a four-man defensive line. Great offensive block, and look at that hole. Put the truck through it. That just swindled right out of there. Gary Moore had not touched the ball as a running back before that play in this game. And now it is 28 to 10. Well, he could talk about big plays, but Bates has made one that goes right down with the two catches of Hancock and the punt return of Roland James. And Tennessee at one time down 10 to nothing. Finds itself up 28 to 10. And figuring, hello there, Blue Bonnet Bowl. I'm coming to Houston, Texas. They're going to have a good time down in Houston. They treat those people real good. Of course, everybody in Texas treats everybody real good. They're sending a message right now to Lafayette, Indiana, Homer Purdue, that they're ready. It's going to be a very good game with the Purdue offense, the Tennessee offense, two different types of offense, totally, uh, totally different. It's going to be a very interesting game for the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Allen Duncan will kick it off. Vanderbilt, they've never lost 10 games in the season before. They've been one and nine before. They started this game, but never have they lost 10. And the Commodores, I'm afraid, are about to just do that. There's Preston Brown. He's got that speed trying to get outside, but look at the Tennessee pursuit. That's what their fans want to see. And by the way, a good many of the 84,000 plus have left because they're watching a lot of this kind of play. Preston Brown trying to get a block, but there's no one around to help him block. They say, Preston, you do it yourself, Hoss. You're the one. Yeah, on a cold afternoon such as this, those sitting in the shade are taking a straight beat on a heated car and home. Those in the sunlight, they can afford to sit there for a while. Ball at the 14-yard line. Time is called, and Tennessee's the one that called timeout. They probably want to get some experience in there, some of their freshman ball players, before they go to the bowl game for next year. Well, we started to talk about all of the freshmen and sophomores. Bates, who intercepted that ball, is a freshman. Mark Burns, who's starting a middle guard, is a freshman. Jones is a sophomore. Kofer, who's not played too much today, but he's a defensive left end, is a freshman. And on offense, it goes the same way. Because you can see Terry Daniels is a sophomore. Oshevsky, who started today and didn't make it as a sophomore, but Ingram is a junior. Mike Miller was in there for a little while. Great speed, a freshman. Lee North, the center, is a sophomore. They got some great young talent. And Heflin hands the ball off to Terry Potter. Who may have gotten a yard. Make it two across the 15. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go. 28 to 10, Tennessee. All 28 points in the second half. Well, Tom Siler, retiring as sports editor of the Knoxville Sentinel, saw his team at his cup for about 50 years, down 10 to nothing. It's a great retirement day for him. He was honored today. And Smokey the Fourth, the dog, Whoops, there's a fit out, and it is covered by, still loose. And belongs to Vanderbilt. Now they say Tennessee. We'll find out. Let's see what we can do. Watch Steve Davis over here, number 57. Steve Davis just comes in and takes Van Heflin down. Great defensive play by Steve Davis. See if we can see 50 come in here because that is Spradlin. There he goes, and he is the one that came up with the ball. See him grab it in? There it is, Spradlin of Tennessee got it. He's got to be happy. Ball at the 16-yard line. Spradlin out of Maryville, Tennessee, and now the Volunteers will try to rub it in a little bit more. 
after being down 10 to nothing. Right ahead goes number 43. That is Terry Daniels. And David Rudder, a senior who came to Tennessee as a walk on, is in quarterbacking. There he is, hopes to go to dental school. He knows he's getting married after the season is over. Six minutes to go. And now we see that Aguilar, the senior tight end, has come in. Number 87. Rudder hands the ball and straight down for about two yards goes. It looks like Gary Moore is getting up again. Gary Moore and Swindoll made the stop inside the 10 yard line third down at about four. Now Nate Sumter has come in so your running backs are Sumter 35 more 33 rudder number eight is your quarterback. Now well, Vanderbilt made a big game of it but the big the depth of Tennessee and the look out I thought he had his man there and that is Aguilar who just came in at big tight end. Streeter has been a star today along with Hancock and Roland James. This is David Rutter. He rolling out to the right. He throws a very nice ball. It just overthrew him down, but he has a good uh, good arm on him. And he can throw distance as well as uh, pinpoint accuracy. Alan Duncan, who won that uh, Kentucky game, outstanding kicker, will try a 27 yard field goal. A little more experience for the He's got it. Veteran kicker. Now the turnovers are going Tennessee's way and they're running away from Vanderbilt. On the other hand we were talking a lot about Tennessee but what about George McIntyre and Vanderbilt. They haven't won a Southeastern Conference game since they won here over Tennessee in 1975. Last year Tennessee blitzed them 41 to 15. And right now it looks as though Vanderbilt for the first time in history is going to lose 10 ball games. The only game they won they beat Memphis State. They lost a couple of those in the last seconds. Been a little bit tough for Vanderbilt. George McIntyre has his job cut out for him. As you can see there's Preston Brown one of the men back there looks like Norman Jordan is the other number 34 as Duncan kicks off. Brown watches this at the live ball and is going to stay right there. I bring this up quite frequently. He may not have only gotten out of the five or ten yard line but Kyle wrote you're from the southwest you know Kyle from SMU. He used to say that is an offensive play and when you're down and you need something maybe you can go all the way. That's the way he is an offensive man thought. Now Preston Brown probably from a coaching standpoint did an outstanding thing by simply staying there and give him a first down at the 20 yard line. But wrote always thought Man, give me the ball and I can go all the way. Whit Taylor is in at quarterback now. He's a sophomore. Whoops. Their flag's down. Steve Davis jumped and he's saying that he was brought offside. And the officials apparently caught the fact that he was taken offside, so they'll take the ball back to the 15 yard line. You know, Jim, going back to your statement of uh, what Kyle Rhodes said, uh, at this stage in the game, I believe Kyle Rhodes is definitely right because Vanderbilt's down so much right now. They're down 21 points. They need to get a long run, and that was an opportunity for it. You have a fellow like Preston Brown a head start? Well, Taylor's not going very far. The pursuit of Tennessee has been terrific. In the second half, I must say that Tennessee was not at all impressive in the first half. The first half, they didn't know uh, how to contain Van Heflin on the beer offense. But uh, the second half, they came out, they adjusted to a six-man defensive line. They came into a uh, blitzing linebacker. And uh, they've just adjusted real well at halftime. I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with that second half play. Second down and four to go. Time has been called by the officials. And again it might be that they go over to a certain time and say five minutes. Remember they did this at the end of the first half also since that scoreboard clock is not working. Five minutes of playing time left. Many of the eighty four thousand plus are long gone. And many are going right now. They've had a chilly afternoon here in Knoxville. 
but they've been rewarded after a so so and disappointing first half their team has come back and their team is winning going away putting the pressure on Vanderbilt and running with the football is Potter Potter gets across the 25 yard line to the 26 or 7 yard line but it'll be third down and about three to go Gillespie made the tackle Van Heflin will be back for Vanderbilt Potter will be back but Mordica and Brown will not two outstanding players on Vanderbilt offense big hole and that is Mordica getting out across the 30 and he's got the first down to the 34 yard line where this time Brett Aitchison number 91 makes the tackle of the two teams on the field Tennessee had great recruiting years looking forward to the Blue Bonnet Bowl and Vanderbilt has had a disastrous year and uh, just hoping that they're recruiting over the winter matter of fact not the winter it'll start I believe tomorrow in earnest will bring them better years Potter with the football nobody seems to realize it he's across the 50 yard line that time a good fake by Taylor and nobody really followed Potter I thought it was an excellent fake by Taylor and uh, Potter had that ball and look at this right here Potter has the ball the defensive lineman no Potter has the ball but they didn't make the move on him linebackers were caught coming up tight now they tell us three minutes left Ball on the 47 yard line of Tennessee. Potter again with the football inside the 40 yard line. A pickup of perhaps eight yards before Chris Bolton, number 61, makes the tackle. You know, Craig Pukey did not play today, and he's by far and away the best defensive player aside from Roland James on the club. He's a linebacker with great lateral movement, all Southeastern Conference. Leading tacklers cause more fumbles than anybody else. He'll be ready for the blue bonnet ball. Oh my Taylor never had a chance to pitch the ball out at all. And getting up again is that same man Chris Bolton number 61. A loss back to the 40 yard line. Chris has had an outstanding day especially the second half on defense. Third down and about a yard and a half. As they say his forward motion actually got him inside the 39 yard line. Bugs wide left, Brown wide to the right. Taylor pitching the ball back, and there goes Dunster and a fine open field tackle across the way by Bill Bates, the freshman, number 40. So moments ago, intercepted a pass and set up the field goal by Duncan of 27 yards. Well, ESPN has enjoyed its collegiate football season. I hope you've enjoyed it with us. Now stand by for college basketball coming up. Much of that will be live, including several of the tournaments. Taylor, quick pitch back to Mordica, and Mordica just does get out of bounds at the 35-yard line, and that's enough for the first down. Vanderbilt came up. The Knoxville fired up. Went out to a 10 nothing lead easily could have been 17 or at least 13 to nothing. But I don't think that would have mattered a bit in the second half because Tennessee has come out and played outstanding football in the second half and completely shut down Vanderbilt. The Commodores have not scored while Tennessee has run up 28 points. Taylor gives to Potter and there's that unknown man again. They finally catch up to him inside the 25 yard line. Aitchison makes the stop number 91 just now getting up running down Terry Potter's got the big day of the day 113 yards on 18 carries we've been watching Hubert Simpson and Frank Mordica and Terry Potter's been the big man father is awesome running up that line he and Mordica make a very good backfield I think that if they had their game plan set a little bit better uh, especially the second half they did not adjust their offensive plays the second half to the uh, Tennessee defensive uh, alignment when a Tennessee adjusted usually an offensive team will adjust or a quarterback will use an audible and uh, Jim they didn't do that the second half and it kind of surprised me. Here is Whip Taylor coming back with 40 seconds left. Our congratulations to the University of Tennessee and their staff they're going to wind up the regular season seven and four. 
And our hopes for Vanderbilt that things will be better in the seasons to come as they're going to want up one and ten. They probably wish I didn't have to say that. Taylor fires the ball and the receiver Brown was cutting in and Taylor went to the outside with the throw. About ten seconds left. Vanderbilt treats this as the game. Tennessee kind of looks to Alabama as their game. That was a big disappointment for the Volunteers. They were up by 17, leading 17 to nothing. Alabama beat them. Vanderbilt calls timeout. They'd like to finish the 1979 season with a score if they can. I think that's what they're trying to do. And uh, it'd be good if they could. It would help them. Uh, make it a little bit easier but when you lose Jim and uh, especially the second half they did not deserve the win they didn't come out aggressive the second half and Tennessee did Tennessee wanted it much bad and uh, just went after the, uh, the Commodores of Vanderbilt but there's always another year as they say things could be better next year well some of those from Vanderbilt have been telling us that the Air Force game which they lost by a point when Air Force drove 80 yards and 55 seconds for a winning score really had the Vandy team down and I said well they've had a week off a week to get over it and it looked as though they had gotten over it in the first half they played excellent football aggressive football but Tennessee has just overpowered him here in the second half Vanderbilt hasn't been taking the chances now here's Taylor back and there he is still back isn't he this time it is Val Barksdale who by the way is an ordained minister and that's not what ministers are supposed to do well I'll tell you it's uh, it's amazing, but uh, let's watch this ordained minister come in here and just hurt this ball player. And this Ooh. is the last play of the game as Barksdale gets with Taylor, and that's been kind of the second half for Vanderbilt as it ended right there. It's all over. Tennessee now seven and four. Vanderbilt now one and ten. Final score with all 31 points in the second half. Tennessee beats Vanderbilt 31 to 10. <laughs>